Hello, I'm Ederson Oliveira. I'll be presenting this video for dnnhero.com. In this video, I'll be talking about the dynamic registration module from Data Springs. And with this module, we can replace the standard registration page of .NET Nook. So let's let's have a look. Let's have a walk through. Let's set up. Let let's set a goal of what we want to achieve. And let's give it a shot with this module and see if we can do that with dynamic registration and how we can go about doing that. So I do have a test website. And if I click register, as you can see, this is the standard registration fields, registration form of .NET Nook. And my goal here will be very simple. Even though dynamic registration a module can do a lot, can really do uh, a lot, a lot. But right now, I want to do something simple with it. I want to see if I can accomplish the following. I want to make this form simpler. For instance, I want to remove username and I want to remove display name from the form. I want to recreate this form using dynamic registration uh, module from Data Springs. And I just want to ask for first name, last name, email address and password. Now, here's the tricky thing. DNN, the core DNN, it does require all those fields. So all those fields are mandatory in their database, in the database. So we do need to supply a username, first name, last name, display name, and email address in the database. Now, we can supply them uh, behind the scenes. We don't necessarily need to ask the user for those information. In my case here, what I want to do is I want to use the email address as the username and I want to use the display name. Sorry, I want to use the first name as the display name. So I'm going to reduce the number of questions that I ask the user who's registering. But at the same time, I'll be providing all those fields to DNN by using dynamic registration because we cannot we cannot reduce those fields directly from the standard registration form of .NET Nook. So let's get things started here. Let's log into the backend as super user because we have to install the module. And once we are logged in, let's go to host and then module definitions. Now from here, we're going to go to the pull down menu, to the action menu, install module, just a standard registration. Just, sorry, a standard installation. Click Browse. Then I'm going to the folder. Here's the module. I have downloaded the module already. So this is the dynamic registration module. Click Open. Then let's click Next. And Next again. Next again. Okay, there's some uh, last terms here. I'm going to accept this without really much. Next. And now the installation process should be running and we should have something in a second. So here, here is uh, the installation log. And if we scroll all the way down just to see if uh, everything went fine. Yeah, no errors. Installation successful. Let's click return. Now from here, let's scroll down to see the dynamic registration, it is installed. Now, what we're going to do next is we will create a page that will be our new registration page where we're going to add that module, the dynamic registration module to that page to be our new registration page. Anyway, let's just scroll all the way down, all the way up. So click here, home. Let me click on new. And I'm going to call this page as new registration Just for the sake of our example here. Uh, this page will be visible by all users, but it will not be included in the menu. We don't want this. I don't want at least at this in this demo to show uh, a new menu there. I just need a page with outside the menu. So by doing that, I just have to click update. And here is our new page. I'm going to remove the HTML module that came in. And at the top where it says module dropdown, I'm going to select the 
dynamic registration module. And I'm going to click add. The module is getting added to the page. So here is the welcome message. And you can see it just mentions that the user guide is available at datasprings.com. So let's go to the setup wizard. I mean, we can skip the setup wizard, but uh, let's give it a shot here. Setup wizard. Now it's, um, it's bringing already, uh, pre-selected the, the fields that are standard in .NET Nook. As I mentioned before, I'm going to remove, I don't want to ask for username and I don't want to ask for display name again. Email address will be the username and first name will be the display name. So I don't want to ask that. So let's just keep checked. First name, last name, password, confirm password and email address. Uh, again, you have the option to select more fields if you want, you, but you have, you will have this option as well. At the end of the wizard, you can always go back and reset this uh, information that you have chosen during the setup wizard. So let's just click run wizard. And here it is, we do have first name, last name, password, confirm password and email address. Now from here, I have to set up, I have to say that uh, the display field will be populated for, by the first name and the username will be populated by the email address. So how can I go about doing that? Before we go that far, let's open Internet Explorer and let's see how our page is looking like. So here's how our new registration page is looking like from a user point of view. Now let's go back there. And from here, we can go to this icon that says set up your .NET Nook core integration specification. So let, let's click there. And from here, I can click the NN core integration. Now here again are the fields that are core to .NET Nook that we must uh, populate them regardless if we ask with, if we ask for them or not. Right now we are not asking for username and we are not asking for display name, but they need to be populated as I said, uh, before. So for the username field, as you can see, there is nothing selected here. So I'm going to select another field to be, to populate the username field, which will be the email address. So the email address will be our username and the display name will be our first name. By doing that, I'm redu reducing the number of fields that I ask in the uh, site registration, as you can see, as compared to the standard one. Usually as a, as a best practice, the less information you ask for uh, in a form, or in this case, in a registration form, the more, the more uh, users you will usually get filling out that form. So the more fields you have, the less users most likely will fill that. The less you have, the less fields, the more users you're going to have filling this for. So with those settings done, I'm just going to click update settings. Now, is that all? I mean, is that the only thing that I have to do? Not really. If, if I go back to Internet Explorer, if I go back to the home page, and if I click uh, register, what we see is that this is, this is the standard DNN, uh, registration. This is not our new registration. So what do we have, what do we have to do to set up this page as our new registration page? So we have to go back to our admin, uh, view and we have to go to admin site settings. This is the end of video one on the dynamic registration module from Data Springs and how you can go about simplifying the registration form in .NET Nook.